Today, I'm going to talk to you about beginning Clawhammer Banjo Basics on the Resonator Banjo. Traditionally, Clawhammer is played with an open back or non-resonator banjo. But let's say you just don't have one of those around, or you've always had your trusty resonator banjo. This video is for you. So, first things first, grab your banjo. Nice! Mine has a very large resonator, pretty heavy banjo, and now that I have my banjo, make sure it's in tune. I'm tuned to open G. You can be tuned to any tuning you'd like. A lot of claw hammer banjo players will tune to open C. Either one's going to work for this exercise. Now that you have your banjo, I want you to take it off and put it on a stand. Someplace safe. Be careful with your banjos. The first and most important step to claw hammer banjo playing is the correct sitting position. So, first thing we want to realize is what's going on with our backs? Resonator banjos are very heavy and it's important that we take care of our backs. So, when you sit, you don't want to be sitting straight up, arching your back. You don't want to do that. You want to find this nice balanced place where your spine feels nice and centered. Right now, I'm kind of moving on the bottom of my hip, which I'm going to call my sit bones. Some teachers will even say, if you have a balloon tied to the top of your spine and it's going up towards the ceiling, you want to kind of feel that with your spine. So again, not like this, not like this. Someplace very nice and centered, right in the middle. Cool. Now that we've got our backs aligned, let's talk about what's going on with our shoulders. When we play banjo, we don't have one shoulder up, or the other shoulder up, or both shoulders up. We want to make sure we have nice, even shoulders. A really good way to make sure that you are doing this is to have a mirror in front of you the first couple times you do this. So for my students, in order to get them to find a relaxed position for the shoulders, I have them raise their shoulders up to their ears and then drop them. Take a big, deep breath. Nice. This is where we want our shoulders to be. Our shoulders will tend to fight against anything that's kind of put on them, say a banjo strap. So just be careful whenever you're playing that you're always constantly checking what's going on with your shoulders. The next thing we need to think about is how we sit on the chair. Ideally, we want to sit on the edge of the chair. This will allow our legs to move freely when we play. If you start to sit back, let's say up against the wall or the back of a chair, you'll notice that our legs are a little constricted. They don't want to move. So a really great place is right on the edge of the chair, right where your hips are supported, but your legs can be moving freely. Cool. I think we've got some good things going. Okay, next thing we need to do is we're going to start with our picking hand. For me, it's my right hand. I'm going to take my picking hand and I'm just going to drop it down by my side. All right, let's drop the other one too. Try to be nice and relaxed. Maybe you raise your shoulders up again, drop them, and just kind of feel for looseness in your hands, especially in the palm of your hand. We want to be super loose. So I've dropped my hands to my side, and now what I'm going to do is bend just at the elbow and bring the hand up. I'm not moving anything else in my hand. One more time. Drop the hand, bend at the elbow, and just take a look at your hand. My hand falls into this position. One more time, I'm just gonna check on it. Cool. I notice that in my hand, my middle finger tends to stick out just a little further. You might notice something different in your hands, but the most important thing is this natural position is exactly what we need for claw hammer banjo playing. Cool. I think we're ready for some claw hammer banjo playing. All right, I'm gonna grab my banjo. Awesome, I've got my banjo. Now what I wanna do is figure out how I wanna hold it. You have some options. One of the most popular ways and a way I recommend is definitely 
getting yourself a strap. Okay. So when I put the strap on, I find that I like holding my resonator banjo in the center. You can also hold it to the side, which is the way a lot of traditional claw hammer players will play. Some people find that that hurts their leg. So you can play it either here or here in the center. Again, the most important thing to watch out for is make sure that you're not fighting the strap. Hopefully, when you're sitting, you will have the same position as when standing. But right now, I'm just gonna talk about sitting position. So, if your banjo feels like it's moving everywhere, one way to help prevent this is to get a piece of shelf liner, and you can put it in the middle to help control your banjo. If you want to put it over your leg, put the piece of shelf liner on your leg, banjo there, voila, we have an excellent place to play claw hammer banjo. So first things first, let's return back to our hand position. Let's go back down, we're going to bend it at the elbow and move it over. Now I'm crossing with this hand right here in my banjo. I've got a guard here. If you don't have a guard in your banjo, it's probably a good idea to try to find either a guard or an armrest or something here. If you don't have that, you can always use a washcloth. You just don't want to kind of hurt these nice little tendons that are inside of your hand. We want to try to keep them as safe as possible. So here we go again. I'm crossing my banjo and I end up here. Now, something important that you'll notice about claw hammer players. They will traditionally play up here on the banjo. Up here gives a very nice, warm sound. I'll explain both places. First, I'm gonna start back here, which is kind of traditional, three finger style, bluegrass style, banjo playing. Now, first thing we need to get going is our right hand and how to strum. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that finger that was sticking out for this when I was first checking out my hand position down here. That's gonna be my middle finger. Now, what I'm gonna do is take my middle finger and I'm going to pluck in a downward motion into the head of the banjo, my middle finger. I am hitting the head of the banjo and I'm doing this just so I can kind of get used to what that's gonna feel like. Now, as you do this, remember to relax your picking hand. Try to remember that feeling that it felt when it was down by your side. We want it to feel that relaxed. Cool, that was me picking on the first string, the string that is closest to the ground. We call that string number one. Now that we've got plucking with this hand down, let's talk about brushing. Now brushing primarily comes from the wrist. I'm gonna show it to you in two places. First we are here, and I'm going to take my middle finger, the same finger that I was plucking with, and brush. What is brushing? Brushing is me starting on the one, two, three, fourth string, which is the thickest string on our banjo. And I'm just brushing down with my finger. You wanna to try to be nice and even over the strings and really make sure that you touch each of them as you go down. You may even think about it as, let's say you have something on one of your fingers and you really wanna get it off, like onto the carpet. You're like, ugh, I got this mud on my finger, I wanna get it off. That's what you want it to feel like. We're kind of brushing through all of the strings. Cool, let's say the middle finger just doesn't feel that great. Try your index finger. Same idea. That is what we call a brush. Now, next thing to do is our thumbs. The thumb should be placed right on the fifth string. Now, when we play the thumb on the fifth string, we want to keep the thumb as relaxed as humanly possible. Just putting all the way to the thumb right into that fifth string or the tiniest string on the banjo. String number one, two, three, four, five. Here's my thumb and I'm laying it on there, just like that. Now I'm gonna pluck with just my thumb. And you wanna pluck 
and the direction of your fingers. You'll notice how my thumb is falling right into my fingers. This is important! Also remember that your thumb does not start here. It does not start here. Your thumb starts all the way from back here in this joint. So you've got a lot of room for your thumb. So make sure that you relax all the way to back there. Here we go again. We're going to plant our thumb right on the fifth string. And pluck. Nice! Okay, now we have all the elements to do claw hammer banjo. I'm going to explain the same thing up a little higher. Here we are. We're going to do the pluck with the finger first. I'm going to use my middle finger because I like it. Here I go. I'm going to pluck that first string. A little bit of a warmer sound. The first couple times you heard me hit the frets, this will happen. Some banjo players have scooped necks, which allow them to pluck and brush better in this area. Cool. Now I'm going to take my brush. Practice brushing. Same idea. Start on the fourth string and brush down. Don't worry about being messy or if you're missing some strings, just try to get the motion down. Cool. Let's add the thumb. Same idea. Thumb relaxes onto the string and then just plucks down into your hand. Put them all together one at a time. Let's first do what I call pluck brush. We're gonna pluck first. This is a good time to check how relaxed your hand is. Again, relaxation is the key to good claw hammer banjo playing. So let's drop our hand again. Nice and loose. I'm gonna check my shoulders. I'm gonna check that I'm not pushing my back one way or the other. I'm nice and centered. I'm gonna check my legs are nice and loose. Cool, I'm ready. Just move my elbow there, my hand is crossing, and something to watch out for, I've got my knuckle in line with the rest of my arm all the way back to my elbow. That's going to be important for starting out. Okay, I'm going to say for this one, go ahead and plant your thumb right there on the fifth string. This is going to help give us some stability when we try to do this. Okay, first, let's go back to the plucking motion we talked about. So I'm plucking down into the banjo with my finger. I have a slight bit of nail. If you don't have any nails, you might want to try a banjo pick. Traditionally, a bluegrass banjo, we have the pick this way. For claw hammer, we're actually going to turn it around to this way. This is going to allow us to use this to pluck into the banjo string. This is if you don't have a nail. Fortunately, I have a nail. Okay, here we go. Thumb planted on the fifth string. Shoulders nice and relaxed. I'm going to check the inside of my palm. Palm's nice and relaxed. And my index finger is placed right on the first string, ready to pluck down. Cool. Here I go. I'm going to pluck. Awesome. Once that feels pretty good, let's add in the brush. So here I am, I'm starting my brush from the fourth string, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to brush down to the first string. As I'm doing this, I'm trying to make really sure that I'm not having any tension in my hand and that I'm remaining nice and loose. Cool. Let's put the motions together. I'm going to go pluck, then strum. Take it slow at first. Pluck, strum, pluck, strum. I'm going to try to make sure I relax all the way to my shoulder and in the back near my shoulder blade, as well as my upper arm and my lower arm. The entire system here is going to be nice and relaxed, trying to put the whole weight of my arm 
into the banjo strings. Cool! Once that feels pretty good, let's start figuring out what we're gonna do with this thumb here. Okay, this motion is gonna be pluck, brush, thumb. Let's take it slow. Pluck, brush, thumb. When you finish, your hand should be nice and relaxed. You shouldn't feel like you're holding it or keeping it rigid in one place. It should just be nice and relaxed. Let's try it again. Got my index finger set up. My thumb is set up on the fifth string. I'm gonna pluck, brush, thumb. Nice! And it's totally okay to kind of dig in right there with your thumb. We're gonna kind of feel that fifth string a little bit. We really wanna grab on the fifth string and just let it go. Yeah! Okay, here we go. Let's try it a little faster. Pluck, brush, thumb, pluck, brush, thumb, pluck, brush, thumb. This is a good time to check in with what's going on with the palm of your hand. Am I staying nice and loose? How's my shoulder? Like I'm centered. Cool. I think we've got the hang of it. Okay, let's try it a little faster. Push them. Push them. Push them. Nice. Let's go up a little higher. Let's see what it sounds like over here. is the beginning of Clawhammer Banjo on a Resonator Banjo. I am now gonna show you what it's like in the center. I'm now gonna pick up my banjo, I'm gonna move my shelf liner, and I'm gonna put the banjo in the center of my legs. I'm gonna try the same movement. Double checking my shoulders, checking my spine, making sure my legs are nice and free, and also checking in on my neck. Making sure my neck is nice and free and not tense. Okay, here I go. Pluck. Brush them. Brush them. Brush them. Cool. I'm gonna try it up here a little bit. Nice. So things to remember: always keep your hand relaxed. Check in with your shoulders. Check in with your back. Watch out for your legs. Check in with your neck. Make sure the palm of your hand, again, is always nice and relaxed. Relaxation is key. And remember, index finger will work, middle finger will work for either one of the times that we brush. It all depends on what feels good to you. So definitely try both out. See which feels better in your hand. See which makes your hand feel more relaxed. And that's the beginning of Clawhammer Banjo. Thanks for watching.